16 by 6.8 percent in the first three months of this year. Why is that important? Well, when China catches a cold, the U.S. also gets sniffles as well, so does the rest of the world. And this is also an indication as the economic pain stemming from coronavirus and might be indicative of what the U.S. will go through. So we saw a contraction of 6.8 percent. That's a shrinkage. And that's the worst, by the way, since records have been kept in China. Going back to 1992, some say it's the worst three months for China and their economy since going back to 1976. And the economy in China hasn't seen a full-year contraction since the end of the Mao era. And this is kind of expected since we know the factories were shut, fixed asset investment fell 16 percent, retail sales dropped 15 percent. But you have to look ahead. And we saw Hong Kong actually trade up 1 percent because manufacturing actually didn't fall as much as anticipated in the month of March. And that's because they are slowly reopening and they can see the other side of business actually getting back to normal and getting back up to full production. But, uh, you know, when China shrinks like this, mm. the world also suffers. Yeah, really. shock downgrade from Goldman Sachs. Only the third downgrade that I've seen on this stock. And Goldman Sachs says that iPhone unit sales will drop some 36 percent in the second quarter of this year. For the first half of this year, sales will drop about 24 percent. And the pickup is not going to come from services. In fact, they said that the uh, services growth will slow substantially heading into the year 2021. Also, the average selling price per handset will actually be lower, given that we had that cheaper iPhone that was released this week. And people aren't going to be able to for that $1,000 price tag, even when they launch the 5G iPhones that are expected later on this year, Goldman Sachs says that that might be delayed because people can't afford it and they're not traveling as much. So there might be, shall we say, a slower burn when it comes to the introduction of 5G. Well, how about that? A downgrade for Apple. You don't see that very often. Uh, let's We're move here on. A downgrade to... from Goldman Sachs this morning. They're looking for a 36 percent drop in iPhone sales in the second quarter. And as for the first half of the year, they're looking for iPhone sales to fall about a quarter, so 24 percent. In fact, they've reduced their earnings estimates for a third time since the middle of February. And they say that services are not going to make up for it either. They're looking at stagnating services growth into next year as well, 2021. And they see that this cheaper iPhone that was released this week, actually, is going to assume some lingering average selling price overhang on iPhone sales in the future. People want to move to cheaper phones because look at 23 million Americans that are out of work. They can't afford a $1,000 phone. So as a result, also with the uh, travel restrictions that we've seen around the world, Apple might be delaying their 5G handset, which they usually introduce in September and October. Mm. Though most analysts, though, are still bullish on Apple stock, and they still expect this 5G handset to be introduced this year meeting being held yesterday and helmed by CEO Tim Cook, where he talked about Apple making really significant research and development investments in the future, because this is an uncertain, stressful moment, of course, given that a lot of their employees, in fact, most of their employees in Cupertino are now working from home. And when asked about job cuts, potential job cuts, uh, Tim Cook said, we have a strong financial position and pointed out that they continue to pay their retail employees while the stores are closed. Some people took that as saying that he hasn't, I guess, the idea of cutting staff. However, when you have $230 billion in cash on the balance sheet, you can afford to still pay and, uh, by the way, invest in research and development. So you come out of this even stronger. You know, even during the shutdown, we've seen device launches, for instance, the iPhone SE, that cheaper phone, the second generation that was launched just this week, also the iPad Pro and the MacBook Air. And some say big tech might emerge out of this stronger than ever before. Pipeline vaccine development is a very costly endeavor, and they're getting half a billion dollars from the Health and Human Services in order to progress further with the most advanced vaccine candidate so far that we've seen. They went into human trials last month. They're expected to get into second phase trials, maybe in the second quarter, and possibly a late phase trials at the end of this year. The earliest will get a vaccine, according to Moderna, it might be the early part of 2021. But this is encouraging, given that uh, you know advanced vaccines have been hard to find. There's only one other one, which is in China, being developed by CanSino right now. But uh, if this is effective in 2021, that's when the economy gets back to normal. 7,000, 17 percent of their workforce are going back to work in the near future. So Boeing just announced this, that the 747, 767, the 777, the 787 programs will return to production and relatively soon as well. So they're looking to stag, stagnate this in and phase it in. So we're looking at April 20th for most of these employees in these uh, specific programs and most returning to work by April 21st. And this is important because we know that for three weeks now we've had suspension of Boeing production in the Seattle area. So this is going to help this uh, company. 
right, Samsung. Um, that's right. So they are cutting their smartphone production in half in the month of April. Samsung is the largest smartphone shipper in the world, but people aren't buying phones in these tough economic times, and nor are they buying these high price tag, close to $1,000 handsets. They're having problems with shipping the Galaxy S20, which is their flagship high end phone. And as a result, they are launching a cheaper phone today in the U.S. We're talking about the Galaxy S10 Lite. It will sell for $650. And this is also the playbook from iPhone, from Apple as well this week, shipping that second generation SE, which is a cheaper phone, starts at $399. I think that's pretty much uh, what people are looking for, just cheaper phones and not the $1,000 price tags. Quite good, especially in these times, since we know that the NBA has a suspended play now for the uh, last few weeks. And Microsoft won this contract over Amazon, over Google. And also, this adds to their NFL profile, since we know that uh, NFL coaches and players have been using those Surface tablets on the sidelines. So how does this work? Well, it uses artificial intelligence and cloud computing. So if you're searching for LeBron James, for one, it basically, the uh, and I have to use the term basically to explain technology to you, Stu, so it searches. It knows you're searching for LeBron James, and then it offers you more insight into LeBron James, maybe some of his teammates, and it personalizes a lot of the, the video that you watch on your screen and also some of the information that you're looking for. Does that make sense? I'm trying to make this very basic for you to understand. Oh, oh basically, Susan, that makes a <laughs> lot of sense. Basically, that was a, a wonderful report. You oh, straightened me out. Thank right. you very much indeed. I've been indeed. getting a lot of questions about rent and also mortgage payments. And don't forget that they have suspended evictions and foreclosures for 60 days until the end of April. And given that Fannie and Freddie, they back about 50 percent of the nation's mortgages, I think there might be some more relief that the government, the federal government can do. Stocks okay. full with ice cream, and then Lewin is my favorite. <laughs>